You have probably heard the saying about a road paved with good intentions. Oftentimes, our best efforts do not produce the desired result. Unfortunately, this happens much more often in complex, dynamic and adaptive systems than we would like. Let's take the case of biofuels as an example. Our over-dependence on oil and the major contribution of fossil fuels to climate change processes are becoming an increasingly pressing issue all over the world. In the early 2000s, the European Union introduced a new legislation to incentivize the use of biofuels in order to combat climate change. For a couple of years, this really seemed to work and the targets were also increased. However, after a while, scientists started to notice that something was wrong. The base of many biofuels are actually basic food crops, such as wheat and corn. While historically, the energy market and the food market were not significantly dependent on each other, due to these strong incentives, they started to merge, causing hunger and malnutrition in many parts of the world. DLUC and ILUC are both byproducts or unintended consequences of this intervention. DLUC stands for Direct Land Use Change. And it is when people cut forests or biodiverse grasslands in order to produce feedstock for biofuel production. The destruction of these areas can cause the release of 17 to 420 times more CO2 into the atmosphere than what can be saved by substituting fossil fuels by the biofuels produced there. ILUC, or indirect land use change, happens when food crops are sold to the biofuel market instead of the food market, causing food shortages and increasing food prices in many regions around the world. This story illustrates the need to shift our thinking from the linear Newtonian cause and effect model. As Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that created it. But how might we do this? How might we shift into a more circular system mindset? As any kind of mindset change, this also takes practice and dedication. One of the first steps is that we learn how to really be with the problem or issue that we are trying to solve. This means that we pause for a moment and allow ourselves to feel all the uncomfortable emotions that the situation or challenge might evoke in us. It is a very natural tendency to try to escape from these feelings and ease the tension by either avoiding the issue altogether, stuffing it somewhere where we do not need to think about it, or immediately jumping into solutions. While it might seem that in the first scenario we are not contributing to the development of the issue, Choosing not to care is also a choice that has an impact, even if it's an unconscious one. And as we could see from the previous example, jumping into solutions very quickly might make us even worse off. An important question to ask in the beginning of our system exploration process is where a system ends and where its environment begins. Adopting the view of system thinking, our whole world is made up of systems. Systems that are interconnected and also embedded in other systems. According to Wilbur, our whole world is made up of holons. Holons are entities that can be seen as parts that can come together to make a whole. And at the same time, they are also holes that can be further decomposed into parts. In order not to get lost in the sea of holes and parts, we need to define a challenge and a vision for our system explorations. Tapping into your own vision about how a healthier and more sustainable food system might look like can give you the necessary inspiration for your work. And when you are able to co-create a shared vision with others, it can be an even more powerful tool for transformation. The initial vision is the seed. All transformative movements in history have started as a tiny seed in the backyard of someone's mind. Nurture your vision and at the same time, allow it to grow and evolve as you share it with others. 
Choosing a challenge and the guiding question can help you to look at the system from a specific perspective and at the same time also determine the boundaries and scope of your work. Defining the boundaries of a system is an arbitrary process, where we choose some elements of the whole to be part of the system, while others to be part of the environment in which the system is embedded in. The magic lies in defining a broad enough scope so that you can allow the deep structure of the system to emerge, while at the same time being conscious of your own time, energy and resources. Now that you have your vision, challenge and guiding question clear, we can start our explorations.